Bless the Lord, brothers and sisters. I'm back yet again with another message. I thank God for this opportunity today to share with you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you are alive, you're well, you're living, not just existing. I pray in the name of Jesus that you are drawing closer and closer to the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you're growing in grace. I pray in the name of Jesus that his word is written in your heart. I pray in the name of Jesus that you are not only blessed by the Lord who is the best, but you are covered by his blood as well. Brothers and sisters, I want to talk today about some of the open doors that the enemy wants you to go in or go through, if you would. And some of it, um, some people call it mystery Babylon in a way where things in this world are so hidden in plain sight. So many things that the enemy, you know, uh, makes it appear to be nice or, you know, a great thing to do, a beneficial thing to do, whether it be, you know, uh, fitness, whether it be just enlightenment or whether it be just, um, you know, you know, uh, self glorification in a way of, you know, adorning yourself or things of that nature. I just want to expose the devil's works. I want you to be educated. I want you to be sharp on this battlefield because brothers and sisters, one thing about fighting a war, the enemy never really wants you to know what kind of armor or artillery that he's working with. Brothers and sisters, you cannot win a war with a uh, Q-tip when your enemy is fighting with biochemical warfare. Brothers and sisters, no, we have to be sharp. We have to be empowered by the Lord. We have to be aware and alert, knowing the skim, scams, and flim flams, if you would, of the enemy. Brothers and sisters, the devil is a liar. I serve him notice right now. He's already defeated and you have the victory in Christ Jesus. I claim it. I believe it. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you also receive and believe that as well. Brothers and sisters, during the course um, of you, uh, you know, serving the Lord and during the course of your journey uh, with uh, Christ, they will be try. There will be, excuse me, there will be pitfalls and different ways that the enemy will try to pretty much, you know, stick his foot out <laughs> when you on this uh, race. Uh, you know, he would definitely try any way necessary to get your 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 will to get your uh, attention and to get your um, you know mine, if you would, off of Jesus. And he will do different ways. Um, you know, he would do it in subtle different ways. He will do it in different ways where it may seem or appear to be a godly thing or a good thing. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of people in hell right now who had good intentions. So brothers and sisters, I pray in the name of Jesus that you listen to this video in its entirety and you uh, definitely will get scriptures as always uh, at the very um, end of this as well as, you know, if you look at the uh, scriptures below, you notice that 99.9% .9 of my videos uh, have scriptures of the Lord attached to it as well. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm nothing without the Lord. I'm nothing without his word. Um, I love the Lord very, very much. And I also realized that even in my life, before I got saved, you know, there's a lot of things that and pitfalls that I actually, uh, or landmines that I've experienced in my life that I want to, uh, you know, if I could help you, if I could help the listener who didn't know about this or, you know, looked at this in a different way, but just thought it was good, but realize, you know, that the enemy is behind it. I want to educate you spiritually so that going forward, you can not only walk in the victory the way God designed, but you also have that artillery and that ammunition in the spiritual realm to fight the good fight. So brothers and sisters, the first thing I want to talk about is yoga. Brothers and sisters, all of these things that I want to talk about today, just want to let you know, are pitfalls of the devil. These are things, brothers and sisters, that you do not want to experience, explore, exercise, or entertain. Ooh, that's a lot of E's. E for evil. Brothers and sisters, yoga. Yoga really means to yoke, brothers and sisters. And if you, you know, know 
how God is. God does not want us to be yoked by anything satanic. Brothers and sisters, you need to be yoked up with the Lord. Amen. Yoga means yoke. It has Hindi or Hindu origins. It, you know, consists of breathings and poses and all of that stuff, stretching. But brothers and sisters, there's a spiritual demonic undertone with yoga. Brothers and sisters, it is not godly. People have baby yoga now. People have animal yoga. Brothers and sisters, you have to pay attention. Anything that's usually worldwide uh, applauded or, you know, <laughs> Uh, making a whole millions and trillions and zillions of dollars. Um, you really have to look at the satanic underbelly of what's really going on. Brothers and sisters, yoga poses, lotus poses, uh, satanic phrases and things that they recite is satanic in origin. Demonic spirits and entities will be manifested through different breathing techniques, different poses. Brothers and sisters, in your subconscious mind, when you are doing yoga, brothers and sisters, people don't realize it, but they are entangled in themselves with demonic spirits. Brothers and sisters, God does not want you practicing, dealing, or experiencing in satanic yoga. I'm moving on because like I said, I have a lot to cover, brothers and sisters. I can't spend an hour on one subject. If you want to research it for yourself, please research this, all this information for yourself. And again, you cannot come against the word of God. So I definitely will be leaving scriptures as well. Look it up, book it up. You know, you know, we're living in an information age, brothers and sisters. It's already seven minutes and I only covered one subject. So imagine how fast, amen, I got to get this going because I got about 10 or 12 different things. Thing. So I'm trying to hurry up. So please, please, please bear with me. Um, you know, satanic video games. Okay. Satanic video games is another open door to the enemy. It's breeding in sorcery, violence, and familiar spirits. Uh, brothers and sisters, um, Ouija boards, of course, is another thing that you don't want to get involved with, but it's an open door to the occult. Brothers and sisters, fantasizing with magic shows or having your kids uh, go to magic shows or different, you know, di magic tricks. A lot of little boys, brothers and sisters, um, sometimes little girls, but usually little boys are fascinated. Um, not all little boys, but some little boys, brothers and sisters, are fascinated, you know, with doing magic tricks or, you know, de deck of cards and things of that nature. Br uh, brothers and sisters, fascination with magic or illusion spells harry potter things of that nature is evil and it's a rebellion against the lord familiar spirits brothers and sisters familiar spirits are demonic spirits that who try to impersonate themselves as the holy spirit very very undercover familiar spirits uh you know lurk in a lot of people's um lives. I mean, familiar spirits sometimes are there when you are little and all the way up to adult life. You have to pray against familiar spirits and pray in the name of Jesus that instead of familiar spirits lurking and lingering in your life, that you, uh, you know, or have the blood of Jesus covering you so that you won't get entangled with those evil familiar spirits. Brothers and sisters, rock, crystals, beads, trinkets, amethyst, citrine, Jasper stones, quartz stones, Indian jewelry, things of that nature, brothers and sisters, chakras, all of that stuff is satanic. Those crystal beads that you see a lot of people in new age, you know, having around their necks. Some people have them in their cars, those beads underneath their pillowcases, things of that nature. Um, some people, I, I heard some people say if they, you know, put it in their cars, their gas, <laughs> Something about their gas, uh, you know, is going to line right or you they get cheap, cheaper gas, something like that. Brothers, this, this is sick. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Uh, you know, anything and any any object or things of that nature that you have to manipulate, uh, you know, to work for your favor. Brothers and sisters, uh, which witchcraft is the underbelly of it. 
All right. Let me just move on. Cause like I said, I have a lot to cover and it's already nine minutes. I can't believe it. All right. Tattoos, brothers and sisters. I have three tattoos. I didn't say one. I didn't say two. I said three. I have three tattoos, brothers and sisters. I had these tattoos before I did not, you know, come to Christ. In other words, brothers and sisters, before I got saved and I wanted to dance with the devil, sort of speak in the world, I got three tattoos being in ignorance. If you have tattoos, brothers and sisters, it doesn't mean that you're going to hell, brothers and sisters. Okay. Let me, let me put that disclaimer there because people are a little bit too extreme. Now that you're aware, brothers and sisters, that, you know, God does not want you to, you know, put any carvings in your body. Or things of that nature. And of course, I'm going to leave scripture with that too again. Because I know you, you're coming after me. Because some people have thousands of tattoos. And one thing's about the devil. hes It's like eating a potato chip. You just can't get one. Brothers and sisters, when I had one, I already knew I was going to have three. When I had one, I already knew I was going to have two. It's a psychological uh, you know, thing. A twist tie that the devil wants you to, uh, you know, practice in. So if you brothers and sisters are thinking about getting a tattoo and you have no tattoos, praise the Lord. Like I said, do your spiritual research and bring everything before the Lord. Like I said, everything that I'm talking about, brothers and sisters, bring it before the Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't say the little G. I, I didn't say yourself. I didn't say bring it to your pastor or your friend down the street. I said, bring it to the Lord almighty Jesus. Jesus Christ and he will give you insight and it will not contradict his word all right all right next thing I want to talk about I can't believe it's 11 minutes all right I'm trying to go faster astral projection brothers and sisters that is a door a gateway to the devil big time brothers and sisters there's a lot of people in the body of Christ that you know, may practice this or, you know, may think this is cute. They may think this is going to, you know, enlighten them into the, uh, you know, dream world and, you know, see things. Brothers and sisters, once you leave your body and, you know, dive into this astral projection realm, you are opening up yourselves to demonic, demonic oppression and possible possession if you're not saved. All right, brothers and sisters, the next one, third eye. Brothers and sisters, I hear that a lot. A lot of people talking about opening up your third eye and things of that nature. Brothers and sisters, it's demonic and satanic. Brothers and sisters, if, if God gave you three eyes across your head, then you would have had three eyes across your head. Okay? And you probably say, yeah, but I saw an Indian child with three eyes. Or, you know, I'm not talking about mal, uh, you know... Uh, I won't say malfunctions, but I, I'm not talking about birth defects. I'm talking about traditional things, a hand, an arm, things of that nature that, that you were born with that God has given you. God did not, uh, you know, design mankind to have three eyes across your face. Come on, wake up. So definitely, you know, getting into that mysticism and, you know, third eye type of stuff enlightenment, seeing things in the spiritual realm. Listen, if God wants you to see things supernaturally, it, 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 like I said, it would not be contrary to his word. Okay. The devil have you thinking, believing and practicing stuff that's of the devil. Beware of that. Egyptology, Egyptian jewelry, Egyptian statues, Egyptian uh, onks, artifacts, things of that nature. G Egypt basically, you know, represents the world, brothers and sisters. Sin, uh, you know, think about <laughs> the people in Egypt, brothers and sisters, things uh, practicing, different gods, different, you know, witchcraft ha has the underbelly of Egyptology, brothers and sisters. You do not want to have those demons around about you in your house, things of that nature. All right, I have to move on. I'm telling you, it's 13 minutes. Uh, just stay with me, brothers and sisters. Secular music. This is a big one, and not a lot of people like this one because they don't want to give up their oldies and goodies. They're so used to, you know, getting on a boogie boogie, yugi yugi, <laughs> rap music, and all of that stuff. I'm, brothers and sisters, listen, I my father was a DJ back in the days, okay? I wasn't saying he was exclusively a DJ because he was, you know, worked in a corporate world on Wall Street as well. Praise God for that. But, you know, it was his pastime. It was his hobby time. So we grew up with music. Um, ba we were basically breastfed music. So you cannot tell somebody like me about the influence and the, uh, you know, the, the, the attraction of music. So brothers and sisters, I had a very huge 
uh, exposure to many types of music. Um, some music seems so beautiful. Some music sound beautiful. Uh, I was educated on a lot of different music because I, I myself worked for a, uh, a library back in the days and I was exposed to all types of uh, symphonies and classical music. So in terms of music, brothers and sisters, you are talking to somebody um, that has a huge exposure to many different types of music. I heard that my very name, Samanda, okay, came from a folk group called Samande. So, you know, I want to get off a little topic, but I'm just telling you in terms of music and its influence, you cannot tell me something that I don't already know. Having that in mind, I want to also let you know, brothers and sisters, the impact of secular music and the underbelly of the devil where the devil resides see brothers and sisters there's godly music that glorifies the lord and there's music that's satanic and perversion perverted that glorifies satan and you don't want to have music throbbing in your head playing in the hallways of your house or in your cars, or even when you sleep in your subconscious, having music play in your ear. You ever have that, brothers and sisters, where you hear music in your head and there's no music playing? You wonder why. Brothers and sisters, nine times out of ten, I bet you that music is not about glorifying the Lord. Brothers and sisters, do you realize that there's an occult practice that takes place with music, with masters, when master tapes are, you know, before they are cut, before the albums are cut, the actual masters that they record the albums are, albums with, excuse me, they, uh, you know, they pretty much take them in a room and when it's a full moon, you know, witches, they go in a pana, uh, what is it, uh, a pana, what is it, pentagon, a pentagon, it's a pent panorama, a pentagon, something like that. Anyway, it's a symbolic symbol and basically they have witches. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you better do the research. You better wake up and know what's uh, hovering over that music that you're playing. Anyway, so witches <laughs> are hovering in this room and they're doing spells and stuff like that. And each and every song that is uh, distributed from that master has demonic demons attached to it. So brothers and sisters, you ever noticed, like I said, back to the potato chip, you buy one song from an album or artist and you got to buy the next one. It's like, you know, reading a, a, a novel, you got to hear number two and number three and number four. Well, that's designed brothers and sisters, these witches and warlocks, so to speak, are hovering over that satanic music and then go into the satanic music um, it goes with the satanic artists and that industry the music industry the music industry brothers and sisters you see the videos you've seen a lot of illuminati type of uh, imagery with the three six and the baphomets and the upside down crosses and the black and white uh type of uh clothing or, or imagery brothers and sisters it's all there okay you gotta be some type of uh you know hermit or living under a rock if you don't believe and know that the industry is covered by satan so it's up to you if you want to have those, uh, you know, demonic demons crawling uh, in your walls, in your house, and tormenting your life, tormenting your children, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of music. I also wanted to point out, there's a lot of music that have lyrics that are really uh, upside down, inside out type of lyrics. In other words, they could be talking about Mary Jane and you think it's a girl, but they're talking about something else. There was another song back in the days that was, um, what was that song? Um, oh. Ah, I forgot it. it. It'll come back to me. But anyway, it was talking about, um, cocaine and it, it, it was, it was, uh, I think it was a rock group or something like that. Um, but it was talking about cocaine but you, when, when you hear it, you think it is talking about something else. Um, it's coming to me. So we'll get back to that. Um, <laughs> the devil's a lie. He's trying to, you know, not have it in my mind, 
but I'll tell it to you, uh, when it comes back to me. But anyway, um, mind, mind control. That's another one. MK ultra. Do your research on that brothers and sisters. The devil wants your mind to not only look like mush, but be possessed, be in a state where it's not usable. It's not alert. It's not functioning. Right. So definitely, definitely watch out for that. Okay, brothers and sisters, moving on. Plastic surgery. Hmm, I don't know why um, I wrote that down, but, you know, there's a lot of people, brothers and sisters, that abuse cosmetic surgery for fun, for sport. You know, and I think that, you know, the enemy does have his hands in there in terms of low self-esteem and making you feel not beautiful and things of that nature. So definitely, you know, bring it before the Lord, brothers and sisters. You know, I, I will never, ever, ever get plastic surgery. Listen, listen, if, you know, things sag or <laughs> wrinkle up, you know, that's exactly what God wants it to, to look like. You know, if I'm at a certain age, I'm not saying, you know, do it by, you know, not eating right and things of that nature. Use wisdom, obviously. But I'm talking about when I'm up in age, 60, 70, 80, I'm not <laughs> going to look like what I look like now. So, uh, you know, age is for a reason. It's for a reason, okay? So definitely... um make sure that that's not the case. Please forgive me for that sound. That was my son in the background. Okay, moving on. Brothers and sisters, I think I covered a lot. It's 21 minutes, but, um, okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, lucky charms, rabbit's foot, good luck charms, things of that nature. Brothers and sisters, new age books. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. Brothers and sisters, if you have a bunch of new age type of books, uh, get rich quick, uh, you know, uh, enlightenment or, uh, you know, better me, better world, better year type of thing. Um, you have to really, 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 really be careful with that because I'm telling you the truth. Anything, anyone or anything that pushes you toward the person rather than God is satanic. And I'm going to use myself as a prime example on all of my videos. And I tell you the truth right now, brothers and sisters, I'm not here to glorify myself. I'm here to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to shame the devil. I'm here to open up your eyes, educate you about what's really going on in the spiritual realm. And if you hadn't known about the tricks, trams, and skim scams of the devil, I want you to be alert. Okay. I'm not here to put myself. Why do you think you don't see me no more? It's not about me, brothers and sisters. I'm here to let you guys know and girls know and men and women know that it's all about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the head of my life. Jesus Christ should be the head of your life. Amen. God should be the forefront of everything you do in your life. Not a get rich quick, not a guru book that you're reading, because I'm telling you the truth. If you get caught up in new age, if you get caught up in those a thousands of books and all of that, what you're doing, what you're really, really doing is saying the Bible, the word of God is like, you know, a comic book. And you're saying all of these other guru book, new age books are better. Or, or more powerful or supersede the word of God. So I'm telling you the truth, brothers and sisters. Look at your library. Look look, look at your library. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. I, I've seen a, 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 I've seen people, okay, and, 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 you know, I've seen people with a lot of books. And, um, you know, if it's not talking about or gearing you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, then it's trying to reach you, teach you, or, you know, put your uh, mind and focus on them and what they're doing and what they're all about. If they're not glorifying the Lord, they glorify themselves or they glorify the devil. So please be mindful of these new age tactics in terms of uh, idols and worship. I got another one, brothers and sisters. I got two more that I want to cover. It's already 24 minutes. I'm glad that you're with me so far. People who worship angels instead of God Almighty. There's a lot of people, brothers and sisters, that have angels in their cars, angel statues, angel posters, angels, angels, angels. Brothers and sisters, we 
have angels assigned to us? Yes. And having angels in your life from heaven is a wonderful thing. Yes. But when you put it before Jesus Christ, as if it is, or angels are a God, you're, you're going in dark territory, brothers and sisters. God is not pleased with that. There's only one God and God will be only worshiped, not other gods, because I'm telling you the truth. If you keep with that, having these little trinkets and this little angel and this little, you know, uh, things in your car with little angels on it, brothers and sisters, you are indirectly having idols in your life. One more thing, crosses. You got a bunch of crosses in your house that have Jesus, a quote unquote image of Jesus still on the cross, brothers and sisters, that is satanic. And I tell you why, and I know you probably said, what is she talking about? Brothers and sisters, last time I checked, Jesus is no longer on the cross, brothers and sisters. He is risen. See, the devil wants you to indirectly undercover still have that image of Jesus suffering because he wants you to believe, think, and feel that Jesus' job is not done. So when you look up that, if you look, if you have that cross around your neck with Jesus on it, a, a quote unquote image of a body of Jesus on it, so to speak, what you're doing indirectly is saying that Jesus did not finish the job. When you have a cross with nothing on it, with Jesus not on it, you're basically saying that Jesus did his job, did the job, died for you, rose, the risen Christ, the risen Christ. That's the premises that God is awesome, that he paid the price, and that he's no longer on the cross, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, these are little things, brothers and sisters, little things in your life that you can examine, explore, and make sure. Wow. Examine, explore, and make sure. This is great. <laughs> examine, explore, and make sure, brothers and sisters, that these satanic doors are closed. So I pray in the name of Jesus that this helped you. I pray in the name of Jesus if you have anything in your life that's contrary to the word of God or what God wants you to do, get rid of it, brothers and sisters, ASAP. If you want to rewind this video and maybe you need to listen to it again, fine, by all means, that's great. But brothers and sisters, the bottom line is the word of God shall keep you, govern you, direct you, and more importantly, save your life. Because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That's in John 1.1. 1, 1. Brothers and sisters, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Brothers and sisters, the word of God is also true. And again, I will, yes, I will leave scriptures at the bottom of this message. Stay blessed, stay alert and alive. In Jesus' name, amen.